Hello from the Inyo National Forest just outside of Mammoth Lakes, California. Today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. All of our videos up until now have been about ultralight backpacking food or backpacking nutrition, so I thought I'd switch it up and talk about what I'm taking on my upcoming through hike of the Colorado Trail. Um, so my base weight right now is at 12.3 pounds. I could easily drop quite a bit more than that, um, but everything that's in here has been chosen strategically. Um, so today I'm going to go through and talk about why I chose what I did and actually also why it is where it is in my backpack, because that's also been chosen, determined strategically. Um, so if you're new to our channel, my name is Erin Owens Mayhew. I'm an ultralight long distance backpacking registered dietitian and also the founder and owner of backcountryfoodie.com, which is an online resource for backpackers who are interested in ultralight meal planning. Um, we also live in a van full time, which explains why I'm here today. Um, if there's any wind noise, we really apologize. Um, we're at the mercy of mother nature, so we're gonna do our best. Um, so let's get started. I am going to talk about first what I'm wearing. Um, so I am a trail runner convert. So I absolutely love my Hoka's. These are the Stinson's ATRs. Um, if you're new to Hoka's, I don't recommend them for rocks when they're wet because they are very slippery, um, but I do love them. I have chronic plantar fasciitis, so these have been great for me. Um, I also wear lightweight darn tough socks that are wool, so these have worked really well for me. Um, because it's the Colorado Trail, there's going to be a lot of sun exposure, so I'm actually wearing a hoodie this season. This is new for me, um, and I'm wearing a short sleeve wool t-shirt underneath. This is actually left over from the Oregon Coast Trail, so it's extremely stained and dirty, but I figured, well, why not just ruin this shirt this trip rather than ruining another one? Um, I'm also wearing the Outdoor Research Ferocity pants. Um, this is also new. I've worn skirts in the past, but again, there's going to be a lot of sun exposure, so these are what I'm wearing this year. Um, and my hiking poles I've had for years by Black Diamond. I've had these so long, I don't even know what model they are anymore. Um, you can actually see they're pretty beat up, um, but I absolutely love these. I could use carbon fiber poles, um, but I'm really rough on them, so I'd rather use the aluminum just so I can toss them around. If I'm on rocks and need to toss them down, I don't have to worry about them breaking. They've been super durable. Um, so these are going with me. Um, so now I'm going to start with my pack on the outside, and then I'll work my way inside. Um, so this is the Osprey Exos 58 liter. Um, it does look really puffy uh, for a lightweight, well, lightweight 12 pound pack. Um, the reason being that I don't use stuff sacks. It's just one more thing to pack in here that I feel like I don't need. Um, everything is just tossed in here loosely. But there is, again, a strategically packed. So I'll talk about why that is. Um, so starting on the outside again, um, I normally carry a sponge. I like to be relatively clean when I'm through hiking. Um, but actually, Riveted Oak Designs is a new company that's owned by a woman, so I'm really trying to support her this season um, that has ultralight backpacking gear. So this is her little cloth that I'm using. I've actually cut it down into a fourth of what the original size is. So this is something I'll use to wipe my face, my body, what have you, um, throughout the day. Um, and then on the bottom is my sit pad. It's an ounce and a half. Um, it's just blue closed cell foam that this goes everywhere I go. There's been so many times that I've had to sit on rocks or any other thing that's really uncomfortable. So this goes everywhere. This is one of my luxury items that I love. Um, and then on this side, this is new for this season because I'm going to be doing a lot of work filming videos. I'm doing a lot of recipe testing, meal prep testing, a lot of other things that is new for me. Um, so this is a Gorilla Pod with the phone mount. So this is actually one of those, like I was saying, I could cut back some weight. This is the whole gear setup for my camera is about a pound. Um, so this is new, but it's something that I feel like is necessary for this trip. Um, I carry my tent poles on the side. I don't bother putting them in a stuff sack. And then I carry my tent footprint here. Um, this I actually use as a pack cover if it rains. Um, because again, that's just one more thing that I don't have to carry, so I can throw it out on my pack really quick. I can use it as ground cover really quick if I'm somewhere that's uh, just need to cover the ground a little bit. Um, and then my tent poles, or excuse me, my tent stakes are in here. I carry two extra because you never know if you're going to lose one or break one, what have you. Again, I don't bother putting them in a stuff sack. I just put a really tiny rubber band around them. So that's what's in that pocket. And then on my other side pocket is where I keep my food rations for the day. Um, his, historically, I've put them in a plastic baggie. This season, I'm trying to be as plastic free as possible. So this is actually just a mesh produce bag that I used for grocery shopping. Um, this one's a little big for what I'm using this season. So I've actually ordered a few smaller ones for this. But this is a full day's meal with my spork in it. 
And then something else that I really like that I'm not sure how many other people do is the smart water bottles are really popular. But what I do is I attach it with a carabiner to the front of my pack. So it's always on my side. And I actually have a full video about this and how I use this ultralight um, filtration plan. Um, I do use the Sawyer Mini. I know a lot of people don't like it because the flow rate is so slow, but the reason why I use it is my water bottles always have dirty water in them. I don't bother filtering liters at a time. Whenever I come across the stream, I just scoop up the water, screw on the top, and I drink from it all day long. And our recipes are designed to use very little water, so I don't have to, again, filter large volumes of water. I just pour in the four, six, eight ounces, takes a few seconds and that's all. So another one of my tips that's also in that hydration video is I mark every four ounces on the side of my bottle. So that way it's an easy way to know how much water I need to put in my meals um, without putting too much water and having a soupy dinner. So that's what I do. Reason why the carabiner's there is there's been countless times that I've bent over to pick up something and this has come falling out of my pack. So this has saved me a number of times. Again, weighs in a couple more grams. It's not really necessary, but something that I've really found is useful for myself. And I have exercise-induced rhinitis, which means my nose runs constantly while I'm hiking. Um, previously, I've just used a bandana, but I end up having a really raw nose that ends up bleeding. Um, so again, this season, I am going to use Riveted Oak Designs, her hanky. Um, so I'm hoping this works. It's antibacterial on the inside. So I'm gonna give this a try, something new this season. Um, something else new this season because of the recent bear attack, which was fatal. I'm considering taking a little can of bear spray. This is something I've never ever done in any of my hikes before, but because I am going to spend a lot of time cooking and probably going to be by myself a lot of the time, so there's not going to be a lot of noise keeping the bears away. Um, I haven't quite decided yet, but this is something I'm considering to take. And then also I am taking some chapstick because again, of the sun exposure, I have a really awful habit of licking my, licking my lips while I'm hiking, so this is going with me. I'm also a huge fan of the Garmin InReach. This one, I don't know if you can tell up close or not, um, has been pretty beat up. I've had this for many, many years. Um, again, I could have a lighter one um, using the Mini, but I don't like relying on my phone having enough battery charge in an emergency. Um, this one has saved me in countless times. Um, there's been times that I've noticed forest fires, so I've been able to text Chris and say, hey, please call the forest ranger see what the status is. Do I need to get out? Am I safe to keep going? Um, there's been other storms that he's been able to tell me when they're going to come and go. Um, so this is a must have for me. And then also on the front, I may, another reason why I love this pack. Um, again, I could have a, a lighter pack, one of the newer ones, but this one actually fits like a glove. I've put many, many, many miles on it. It fits like a good old pair of blue jeans. So I'm not willing to risk having some hot spots from a new pack when this one just works really well. Another reason why I love this pack is I've, I'm a huge fan of hip belt pockets and a lot of the newer ultralight packs don't have hip belt pockets. Reason being is, you probably heard in my other videos or if you follow me on Instagram or have attended any of my master classes, I love nutrition via liquid. Um, so this is one of my afternoon mocha drinks that if I feel like I'm starting to hit the wall in the afternoon, I just pull it out. Again, I have my water right there. While I'm still hiking, I pour some water in, zip it back up, shake it, and I drink while I'm walking. There, I don't even have to stop. Um, and I believe this one has three to 400 calories in it. So this is a really good way to get me through until dinner time. Um, and then also in my hip up pocket, I keep a odor-proof little snack bag. Um, this is for any snack bars that I eat during the day or something like this, that instead of stopping and pulling out my big garbage bag, I put it in this, then that way it keeps all the little crumbs out of my pocket that the mice love. Um, so this has really helped with keeping my backpack um, safe from those little critters. So that goes in there. And again, my other hip up pocket is where my other snacks for the day go. Um, usually this is kind of a first half of the day snack supply. And then I really fill it at lunchtime for my next half of the snack. Um, so this is our Aloha Trail Mix. This is another one of my snacks. This is about 800 calories in this little thing. So this will last me all morning long. I'll just kind of snack on it over time. Um, so that's the front of my pack. There's, and then on the back in the mesh pocket, um, this trail is going to have a lot of water on it. There's only a few sections that I'm going to have to carry multiple liters. Um, again, because of my style of uh, filling up with water as I go. I'm not gonna carry a lot of extra water just to keep my pack weight down. Um, so I just have these water bladders that I use. These are actually brand new because my old ones I've had for probably four or five years, finally broke. Um, so these are brand new for this season. They're a liter each. 
Um, like I was talking about, here's my actual garbage bag that I use to put all my stinky things in during the day. This will go in my beer bag at night to keep it out of my pack. Um, my trowel. And then here's my pee kit. Um, it's just a doggy poo bag that's biodegradable. Um, there's some flushable wipes in there. There is some hand sanitizer and extra doggy poo bags for, well, for other things. Um, so that's my pee kit. And then I also have Raynaud syndrome. So my hands get really sensitive to any changes in the wind and the temperature if it gets even slightly cold. Um, so I keep my Gore-Tex mittens in the back of my pack just so I can easily access them if I need them. Um, so these are really crucial for me. And then I also keep my wool buff in the back of my pack so it's really access if it gets to be really windy or just a slight chill and I just need a little bit of something on my face or even I use it to keep my hair out of my face, um, any number of things. So I use this for all sorts of things. So that's the outside of my pack. Um, now let's go on the inside. And again, everything's in here strategically so I can get it at certain times of the day that I need it so I don't have to dig all the way to the bottom of my pack for something. Um, and it also depends on the weather. So I'm, this is set up for like a nice day. So if it's gonna be a colder day, I'm gonna have some of my colder gear towards the top. Nicer day, right the, the way it's packed, my colder gear is at the bottom. Um, and I keep my food kit at the top, so that way it's easy to access when I wanna stop for lunch. Um, this is new. Normally I take a really lightweight titanium pot, um, but again, this year I'm gonna spend a lot of time trail testing things. I'm gonna do more cold soaking. Um, so I wanted to use the Vargo Bot as kind of a combination of cook pot and cold soaking. So in here, I have a little tiny bit of camp soap, which is new. Um, again, I normally freezer bag cook all the way up until this trip. Um, so I'm gonna need to wash my dishes a little bit. This isn't even completely full. So there's just a few drops of um, biodegradable soap in there. Um, here is my stove. Um, I use the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. And I just wrap it in a tiny little, this is a baby washcloth. The reason why I wrap it in this is because there's been times that my pot will still be a little bit wet and it causes corrosion. So this protects my pot from it resting. Um, here's a lighter. Normally I'll carry a smaller one, um, but this is all I found at the grocery store recently. So I'll try and find a little bit smaller one in my stove. And then I just wrap that up. And then inside my pot, I keep um, tiny little Nalgene bottles, a little one of olive oil. This will be a little container of coconut oil that I'll use. And I always keep it, this is where I'll use plastic. I will keep it in a plastic baggie just in case it does decide to make a mess. And then I've also heard that the Vargo bots um, with changes in elevation will get locked. Um, so this trip, what I'm gonna do is actually store it like this in my backpack. Um, I need to find a large rubber band to go around it, so um, hopefully that's going to keep from having any trouble with that getting stuck. And next up comes my ditty bag. Um, this is actually quite a bit smaller than I've used in the past because I have been able to really fine tune what I need um, during the day. And again, this is by Riveted Oaks Designs. Um, so inside this, it's a Cuban fiber little pack. I have my first aid kit, which has a tiny little Swiss Army knife. And I've also learned the hard way to carry an O-ring for my smart water bottle um, because they have popped out in the past. So I carry just a single one as a backup. Um, and I also, which might be unusual for some people, is I carry some gloves just in case there really were a really awful incident and there's a lot of blood. Um, so I do carry those. Otherwise, there's one alcohol prep, there's like two Tegaderm and like two pieces of gauze. I've taken wilderness safety classes, so actually I will probably, if something really were to happen, I could use any other thing in my backpack versus having to carry some extra gauze that probably wouldn't do a whole lot of good. Um, so that's my first aid kit. Um, sunscreen. And then I have a tiny little brush that I use. And then I have a toothbrush. It's a half size of a travel toothbrush, so I've even taken the end off. Um, and then I just have a little travel size toothpaste that I use. And then the headlamp I use, I don't typically night hike. Um, so this is really just to be able to get around in my tent at night, or if I get into camp just a little late, then it's something that I can get around, but this doesn't put out a lot of light. Um, it's the Petzl E-Light, um, but it does the job for what I need it to do. And this is a extra smart water bottle cap. You never know when you're gonna drop it. So I've learned to carry a spare. Um, instead of carrying the backwash syringe, I just carry one of the um, caps. So that way I can backwash through it if I absolutely need to. 
And then again, for this season, this isn't something I normally would carry. It's one of the really heavy anchor battery packs. I would normally carry just the 5200. Um, I believe this one's 10,000. Um, again, this is because I'm doing a lot of videoing this trip. Um, so this is something that's a little bit heavier than what I would normally carry. And then my sunglasses. So I just had this really lightweight little um, cloth pouch that I use. And these are my prescription sunglasses. So these will go with me. And then next comes, um, I just use for rain gear, the um, Frog Togs Emergency Poncho. Um, again, this is a multi-use item that I use for all of my trips. Um, I found that wearing a raincoat when it's raining, I just sweat. And then I'm just as wet on the inside as I am on the outside. So I don't bother wearing a raincoat anymore. Um, rain pants, same thing. I just get really hot. Um, so if it's really raining hard, what I'll end up doing is probably stripping off my pants and putting on some running shorts. So those will dry really quickly. Um, also, if it's raining really, really bad for an extended period of time, I'm just going to pitch my tent and climb in. Um, so that's kind of my strategy for really bad rain days. Um, I love the poncho for breaking the wind um, because it's just enough to break the wind, but I also get a lot of ventilation. I also use this as a pack cover. Um, if there's just a little bit of dampness outside, um, I use this for ground cover if I want to lay out on the ground. Um, this is great for mosquitoes at night. If I'm wearing shorts, I wrap it around my legs to keep the mosquitoes off. Um, so there's any number of things that I use this for. This is actually probably one of my favorite pieces of gear and it's $4.95. Um, so the next up comes my tent. Again, this is another one that I could cut some weight. It's the Big Agnes um, Fly Creek tent. It's a two person. Um, I bought this back in 2017 when I first started my long distance hiking um, journey. So back then I didn't know I really could use a one person tent. Um, so it's fine. It's great. Um, I don't see a reason to spend hundreds of dollars on a brand new tent when this one works just as well. Um, and then this is the fly. The reason why they're in two separate bags and not a stuff sack is because this way they're on the top of my pack and if it has been wet overnight or it's rained, I can easily pull this out at lunchtime and let it dry. And this one dries super fast. I've never had a problem with this not drying before um, bedtime again. So that's the reason why they're in these. Um, and they just stuff in there just fine. And then comes my food bag. And again, this is different for this trip. Um, typically, I will use my Z-Pax Cuban Fiber bear bag. Um, but because this trip, there's a little bit more bear concern. Um, than other trips, and there's also not the proper trees for bear hangs, um, then I'm going to use the Ursac bag. And again, this is one that's a little heavier than other bags. Um, and one thing I actually learned recently on the Ursac um, YouTube video is a quick release tie. So this is really easy that you just put a clip carabiner on the end um, and clip it around the tree. And it's um, a slip knot, so if I need to adjust the day for the diameter of the tree. I can do that really easily. Um, so I'm kind of excited that I learned this little trick just within the last few days. And this is the Ursac Major. This isn't the extra large one. Um, this is actually packed right now with four days worth of food. Um, and this is also again a little different from my previous trips. Um, I prefer the, let me pull this out, the Coglin brand. Um, overproof bags because I found the Lopsack Oct sacks, the zippers just don't work very well. I feel like they peel apart really quickly. They're more expensive. They're actually a little heavier, I think. Um, so I've used these. They're less expensive and they've worked really well for me. Um, what's different this trip is normally I would, again, have all my meals in 24-hour supply in plastic baggies and put them individually into my bear bag. That way I don't have to think about what I'm going to eat each day. I just pull it out and move on. Um, but this year, because I'm trying to keep my pack as light as possible, I'm actually, I dumped all of my food in individually, just so it would pack a little bit more compactly. Um, so I don't have to take the extra large bag. I can keep it in this one. Um, and there's plenty of room to put my um, Coke pot in there at night um, and any other, my trash bags, um, my toothbrush, my toothpaste, all those things. So there's still plenty of room to put those in there. And I use the pump sack for my sleeping pad as my pack liner. Um, so it's another dual purpose item. And inside I have my Patagonia down sweater. This is new for this season too. I normally have always used my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer, but it just wasn't cutting it. And this season, again, I'm trying to cut some weight. So instead of taking base layers, I'm taking a heavier puffy jacket. Um, if I need to, I'll just sleep in these extra clothes. If I need some extra warmth, 
Um, again, this is another reason I take this, the um, poncho, is that this could be another layer of insulation. If I absolutely have to, I can wrap it around my sleeping bag as another layer. Um, so based on what the other trail reports have been and the different times of year, I think this is going to be more than enough um, for staying warm. And then again, I, the Raynaud's part, um, I carry heavier gloves than probably some hikers. These are windproof um, mittens, convertible mittens that I absolutely love. So I can still use my fingers um, if I'm cooking or something like that, but then I can quickly put the mitten part back on. Um, and then I have a windproof fleece hat that I use. I typically will actually sleep in that quite, a, quite often. And then an extra pair of underwear, we'll leave those there. <laughs> And then here are my sleep clothes or dry clothes or whatever extra pair of clothes that I might need. These are just a pair of running shorts that are really lightweight. Um, this is actually an old race running t-shirt that's extremely lightweight. I mean, this might be two ounces, I think. Um, so this would be a sleep shirt. Um, and then comes my sleeping bag. Again, I don't use stuff sacks. It goes in here just fine. Um, I use the Enlightened Equipment Hot Pink, my favorite color, <laughs> for my sleeping bag, um, Revelation 20 Degree Down Bag. Um, this I've had for a few years now and I absolutely love it. I'm a convert. I love the quilt option now. I don't think I'll ever go back to sleeping in a mummy bag because I'm a side sleeper. Um, so I sleep really, really well using this. And again, if I need to be warmer, I can tuck it underneath my bag. If I'm too hot, I can open it up just like a blanket. Um, so that's what my favorite sleeping bag. And then the final item in my backpack is another heavy item, but again, it's strategically used because sleep is extremely important for me when I'm backpacking, especially long distances. Um, if I don't sleep well, I'm not gonna recover well. I'm not gonna be happy the next day. Um, so actually I carry the X-PED um, Winterlight R-Value 5.2 um, sleeping pad. So this is pretty heavy, um, but again, if I sleep well, I'm gonna feel well, and the hike's just gonna be that much more enjoyable. Um, so there you have it. There's the unpacking of my backpack for my Colorado Trail through hike. Um, if you want to follow along the season, you can find me at Instagram at backcountry underscore foodie or at Facebook at backcountry foodie. Um, I hope to do a lot of posts while I'm out. Again, having all this extra camera gear so you can follow along. Um, and again, if you want to check out our website, I'm at backcountryfoodie.com. We have nutrition videos. We have master classes. We have a really awesome, um, some resources right now, podcast episodes. So anything you'd ever need to know about backpacking nutrition, we probably have it there. And also feel free to email me at any time at Erin at backcountryfoodie.com. I absolutely love what I do and I'd be happy to help you out. So until next time, happy trails.